Alright, this video is going to cover mechanical cleaning methods of shark's teeth. This is primarily for freshwater teeth, but if you've got some saltwater teeth that you're having some issues with, this will work on that as well. Alright, here's some of the tools of the trade. Um, Dremel tool, easy 402. This is, uh, this is what your, your bit's going to go on to. These are real nice. Just pop the little thing at the bottom and pops right in there. And uh, this is our abrasive bit, 512E. You can get, um, these are the fine ones. Um, I've got a coarse one on my Dremel right now. Um, any of them will work. Uh, I've had better luck with the coarse ones. Uh, that's why these fine ones are still in the package. We got some baking soda. And we got a Dremel tool, taking the guard off of mine, not recommended. And we got a great white shark's tooth, it was heavily encrusted. This is one of the most heavily encrusted shark's teeth I've ran across. And we've got a Hastalis shark's tooth, fairly sharp on the edges. And then we got some fresh water. All right, so we're gonna start off to try to clean this by hand and see how it goes. I got a feeling it's gonna to be tough. So the tooth is dry right now. I'm gonna go ahead and start scraping on it with this Mako tooth, see what we can do. This is always easier if you got some good sunlight. You can definitely do it indoors, but nothing's better than natural sunlight if you got it. So start scraping on it a little bit here and see what we can do. A little bit off of there. More than I expected, Scraped on the display side for about 20 minutes um, with the tooth. Got the, the really chunky exterior crust off of it, most of it anyway. You can see there's a little bit still there. But we're at the point now where we're gonna try to give it a baking soda scrub, see how it looks. Um, maybe we won't have to use mechanical methods, but there's a good chance we will. So I haven't scraped the backside yet. Um, so I'm gonna try not to get that wet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my thumb wet and I'm going to just dab a little bit of water on there on the front side. It's actually not the front, but the display side, you know what I'm talking about. So now it's nice and wet. Get my thumb wet again, dab my thumb in some baking soda, and we're gonna come back and give it a little baking soda scrub here. See what kind of work we can do on that. Definitely some stuff coming off. It's not sure if it's gonna be enough. All right, so now I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna get it wet again, wipe it off a little bit. If you got a sink, this works good, but also mess your house up and get it dirty real quick. All right, so it looks like looks like we're doing some work here. I'm gonna keep finger scrubbing it with baking soda for a while. If we don't need the mechanical methods, we won't use it. All right, so we're at this point now. I've been sitting here finger scrubbing this thing with baking soda for about 25 minutes now. I made a little bit of headway. You can almost see some enamel and color poking through there, but it, it's really, I really think it would take me almost a week to get that thing clean, sitting there finger scrubbing it. At this point, the best thing to do is use mechanical methods. Now you really need to have good eyesight to be doing this, because you can mess one of these up doing mechanical methods zero to a hundred real quick. And if you've ever lost a family pet or something like that, Believe me, it's nothing compared to how depressed you're going to be if you mess up top quality shark's tooth. Now, if you mess up more than one, you're going to be so depressed, you're probably going to be writing award-winning country music songs. So that might be a good thing. The choice is yours. The key is to keep this tooth wet the whole time you have the buffing wheel on it. You don't want this tooth to ever dry out while you're buffing it because then you're going to get a flat spot and it'll be a different color and it's real easy to tell. Sometimes you can't avoid it, sometimes it just happens. The better you get at this, the less it'll happen. You wear safety glasses and some respiratory protection such as a dust mask or something like that because 
little particulates do fly off of the wheel and you can't see them. Got our Dremel tool. Let's go ahead and start that up. Let it get warm for a little while. You don't have to get it going fast. I just put mine on number four speed. Works good for me. It's gonna start off real slow. Like I said, you got to let it warm up some. Keep that going. And you want to apply real light pressure. Almost none. Keep a real good eye on that. Sunlight helps. You can see the water glistening on the tooth. You'll know if you get dry. Now, just because you're doing mechanical methods now doesn't mean you need to try to rush through it. It still takes a long time to get this done right. So you got to be patient. You know, the tooth takes an hour and a half, two hours to get clean. That's what it takes. You want to do this right. Right there, you can start to see some true enamel color coming out. What I'm gonna try to do is get the tooth fairly uniform before I try to work on these smaller areas. There's still a few spots on there and you're not gonna be able to get those off with baking soda. So this is where you really have to be careful because if you hit any of the enamel that's already clean, you're gonna discover it and that's not what you want. So you gotta be real careful. You only want to, you only want to put your buffing wheel where the black spots are. As soon as they're gone, don't touch them again. And now we're to this point. Got all the black stuff off the face. Still got some stuff in those little serration areas. What we're gonna do first is break out that old Hestalis tooth again. Let's get, try to pick those little serrations out just a little bit in there. Alright, now we're to this point. Got little, little serrations picked out pretty well with the uh, tooth. You can see there's still a little bit of this coloration right along that serration line. So the wheel's gonna be spinning this way, counterclockwise. You want that down, that downward stroke to go right through the serrations like that when you're, when you're running it. And you just wanna hit it real, real easy. You don't wanna uh, put much pressure on it. Keep a real good eye on that too when you're going in there. So we want to do just a quick swipe on the serrations. Keep that downward spin on this side. When we go to the other side, we're gonna have to switch it around going like that and that see what i mean You'll be stroking down if you're not you're going to catch the edge of the tooth and it's going to fly out of your hand i let the tooth dry out for a minute i went and got some lunch just wanted you to be able to see what the tooth looks like dry at this point you can see the enamel it's got some gloss but it's not real shiny see there's there's a little ripple in there that breaks up the sunlight so what we're going to do is go back with the baking soda we're going to finger scrub this for about four maybe five minutes After it's dried out, get a real good image of that gloss. Now it's it's not as ripply as it was before, but it's not got the polished look either. So that's what we're going for. Now I got to do the other side. This side right here from start to finish took me about two hours. I was really taking my time there because I mean just the littlest mistake can absolutely ruin one of these teeth. And this is the end result. It turned out really good. This is one of the hardest teeth I've ever had to clean. I'm glad I was able to share it with y'all and I hope this helps you out in the future on some teeth that you may have. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.